What's going on everybody? It's David Palmer and Leo King and this is my show Uncut Astrology where I take off the mask and go deep behind the veil and give you this week's astrological forecast for the week of August 24th through the 30th of 20. 16. And we're at the end of August. Can you believe it right now? We've stepped into the sign of Virgo. And what a party do we have to talk about. But before we go into the astrology, I want to say this. Number one, if you share this video on Facebook, I will give you a free reading if I pick you. Not everybody gets one, but I pick a winner from anybody who shares this video from my Facebook. Go to David Lawrence Palmer or go to the Leo King and share this video and I will send you this notes of this actual uncut and I'll write and do your reading on the back and snail mail it to you. It's pretty awesome. Also, leokingevents.com to get tickets to my awesome event in Las Vegas, which is happening September 9th through the 11th. You can get one day and three day tickets available and pay-per-view available. We also have a couple rooms left, so at the group rate, so go now, get your tickets at leokingevents.com. And of course, if you wanna get my horoscopes every day, the leokingapp.com, where you can also get your daily horoscope, your sun sign horoscope, and more importantly, your daily text, text notifications, and all the new features are coming out. I just literally, right before I did this uncut, got an email from the app developer of all my new changes that I'm making to the app. Get on the train now, because it's gonna blow your mind what I'm doing with astrology and mobile apps. Thanks so much for your subscription. Now here we are to talk about, it's a Mercury Retrograde Week. Oh yes it is. So, but before we get to the Mercury Retrograde, everything is but before, but before, you know why? This is a week of preparation. Not Preparation H, although it could feel like Preparation H, you know, whenever you have Mars conjunct Saturn, it could feel like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm running through a lot of restriction in my life and that restriction is causing some sort of tear in my soul. Preparation H, the cool gel will take care of that. But the interesting thing is Neptune is squaring all this. So we need to be very careful. Here's Mars that just came out of shadow, which means for the last eight months, Mars has been at its slowest speed. Mars just this weekend came out of its slowest speed. It's ready to move fast and it runs right into Saturn, which is the big stop sign. It's the wise one. It's the one that pays attention to the rules. But it also is saying that you can you can get whatever you want. Saturn is your ambitions. It's your long-term goals. You can really get there. But I think what's important right now is to make sure in order to get there that you don't run as fast, that you look, you make a plan, that you take your time. And there's frustrations that mount up. Oh, trust me, I'm feeling them. The frustrations mount up with Mars and Saturn conjunct. But the, with the square to Neptune, it's saying, are you aware of the decisions you're making that you're about to jump into right now? Or are you just going to slip and fall and hit your head and it's going to hurt really bad? There are more options than you realize to every situation that is in front of you right now. That is what Sagittarius is all about. When it makes squares to Neptune, especially in Pisces, it's saying, with all these different options, make sure you're not making unconscious ones. Make sure that you're not running into one door when there's 15 other doors to look at right now. So this is a time to kind of, I think, be patient. We also are having Mercury start at station, right? This weekend, Mercury station, and it goes retrograde on, on Sunday, Monday. And so it's like, this isn't the best time to really like start making major decisions, even though we kind of can feel pressed on those. I think that it's important for us to take things that we've already kind of brought into our lives already and kind of really analyze them and really look over them. And more importantly, really start to pay attention to, you know, right out the gate, we want to have a plan. Right out the gate, the long term will win. Right out the gate, making sure that we're clear and not running into subconscious or more importantly, trying to heal ourselves through things that more importantly might be not of the highest vibration, need to be understood. So coming from the highest vibration now is so important because, yeah, sure, we all want to put preparation H on the, on the wounds and the hardships in our life right now, and the cool gel feels real good, and that's okay. But maybe going to the, to the, to the bar and pounding you know, a whole bottle of whiskey and buying a hooker to heal it isn't maybe the best thing. And sometimes, like, when you deal with Neptune, you kind of just let your inhibitions, you let your fuck it energy kind of take over. Now, Uranus is also fuck it, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a revolution. Neptune is like, fuck it, I'm over this. There's too much pain. There's too much sorrow, and this will fix it. No, 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 no. Sorry to say. There's nothing that's going to fix pain and sorrow except you 
making a long-term plan to open up new powerful positive doors and to be clear and high vibrational. And this is Virgo, everyone. The sun's entered Virgo now. We got Mercury in Virgo. We got Venus in Virgo. We got Jupiter in Virgo. We got the North Node in Virgo. This is all about really playing your cards in the reality, playing your cards about the clear and, and conscious understanding of things, and harvesting a life that can be beautiful. It might not be as fantasy-like as we wanted or dreamy as we want it, but it's still precious and still beautiful. The thing about Virgo is it doesn't have a lot of imagination, right? It's kind of the science in the lab with the glasses on. But what the interesting aspect is with this Neptune pulling on the opposition, with this South Node pulling on that, with this Chiron, we're wanting this reality to have more fantasy. But I think that you need to realize that you can add that fantasy if it's in the reality correctly, opposed to trying to make something that is honestly, if you were to look it on paper and somebody else, if you were to hand it over to somebody else and they were to read it, they'd be like, this is insane. Are you doing something that would, if somebody that you didn't know were to look at it and go, this is insane? Or are you looking at it and you were to hand it to somebody and they were to go, oh, okay. I know it's a little crazy, right? But you, you can make this happen. That's why it takes a little bit longer of a time to figure these things out and these decisions right now because you just don't want to just scribble it on a piece of paper. We're figuring this out. We're going, shooting the cannon, and guess what? <laughs> Doesn't work out that great. Now, big mutable cross this week. So I got to be very honest. I think that the dates to pay attention to the most are win or, uh, yeah, Wednesday into Thursday. Thursday, Wednesday night into Thursday is going to be the most extreme with this mutable cross and the three-quarter square of the moon in Gemini when we're having uh, all this energy in Virgo and there is going to be nine energies of mutable energy. This deals with, and especially this moon is going to oppose in Gemini the Mars-Saturn conjunction, especially as it squares Neptune. This is going to be a huge T-square. This is going to be dealing with a lot of either deception in the world, some sort of explosion, some sort of uh, power lit fully, uh, unpredictable, in intense events in our life. And I think that we need to really be very conscious of what's going on right now. Do not let your emotions or your excitement drive you too far into the wrong direction right now. Be very clear. Be very cautious of what's going on in the world right now. Things could really be a little bit off. This is a little too intense. I'm going to be real. Not to scare you or anything, but just telling you the energy is really intense. It's a little bit all over the place. It rules seizures. It rules, you know, uh, being distracted. It rules circuses. It rules just everything being overly intense and too much change. It's quicksand, it's tornadoes, it's, it's overwhelming. And so having that drive and focus during in the middle of a tornado is pick a bead and be really smart about it and take your time. Don't get in the truck and start driving at 100 miles an hour and not paying attention to everything because you know what's gonna happen is that house is gonna come and just hit you off the side of the freeway and knock you off the road. Be very, very cautious that during this time especially on getting excited on things that are just coming out of thin air really quick. Long term. Think long, long term. Think clear. Think reality. And I guess we could talk about this Mercury retrograde. The interesting thing is Mercury is going to pass Jupiter as it, uh, and it's passing Venus. And Mercury and Venus are going to conjunct as Mercury stations to go retrograde. So this means that this Mercury retrograde in Virgo, number one, Mercury is retrograding in its own sign, it's ruled by Mercury, and it's going to be retrograding on top of Venus at its, at its fall position, which means this Mercury retrograde is all about relationships. This Mercury retrograde is all about projects and where you're going to change your life based off these things, but learning to do it from a reality standpoint and not a fantasy standpoint, learning to do this from an actual physical, which way can my reality day-to-day -day make this work instead of this like being like, oh, it sounds like it's all pie in the sky, but... Are you going to actually eat it? Is it going to taste good? And especially after dealing with such an intense frustration in your life about trying to get where you're going and stuff, not shooting from the hip days before this Mercury retrograde and making a huge decision that you might not be able to pan yourself out with. I think that this is a time where we really need to take the time to let this Mercury retrograde come through and, and spend the next three weeks to think. We also got a huge eclipse coming next week. When I come back, for the next uncut next week, September 1st is the big solar eclipse in Virgo. That's going to happen in the middle of a Mercury retrograde. Nine days after that, we have Jupiter moving signs, which is going to come into Libra, all while Mercury's retrograde. This Mercury retrograde is so important because it's going to have eclipses in the middle of it, a solar and a lunar eclipse, and Jupiter moving signs. Your whole perception, your whole understanding, and especially with relationships, will become much more clear at the 
end of this retrograde after Jupiter moves into the sign of Libra. And more importantly, we have all of v Venus in its natural sign of Libra, which will happen by Tuesday next week. Venus moves into its natural sign of Libra. People are going to be there for you through this. We all, though, are going to have to wrap up our patterns, be more understanding of how to not get in caught up into the same pattern, but at the same time, take the same pattern and work it in the right way. This is some deep shit. Don't let the wrong antidote fix you right now. Don't let an unconscious antidote fix you right now. Don't get caught up into the drug game. Don't get caught up into, you know, trying to put salt on your wounds or preparation H on the, on the, you know what, when it, and, and that might not be a bad thing, but trying to do things that just don't make sense to fix those issues are going to come up really big. And I think that it's so important this week to think clearly, especially we're on the waning part of the moon. The moon's three quarters square that's going to wane. This is a time for us to really wait through. So when you have a waning moon at the three quarter, that means the, sun, the moon's getting ready for a new moon. This next, you know, week and a half cycle, right? So why would you make the biggest decision in your life with a waning moon, with a Mercury ready to go retrograde, with Jupiter at the end of a sign, and more importantly than that, Saturn squared by Neptune, Mars is driven by Saturn. It's like... You can make decisions that have long-term aspects, but why don't you go into this fog with a deeper understanding of not an expectation? Go into this fog holding hands and willing to see where it takes you because the tornado is picking up. Dorothy is about to leave Kansas and we don't know where the yellow brick road is going to take us. So why have an expectation of what you're going to do when you don't even know what's coming on the yellow brick road? You still got to meet the Tin Man. You still got to meet uh, Scarecrow. You still got to meet the Lion. And in many ways, there's so many things that need to be found coming up here in the next couple of weeks that this week is about the preparation to where you want to go. And maybe it's okay to make decisions on understanding what you want and understanding the path. That doesn't mean that you actually get on that path though and realize that this path is going to be windy, this path is going to be all over the place and coming from a place of non-expectation, willing to go with the flow, willing to go with the universe but more importantly learning that building and harvesting life means you have to actually go out there and cut the leaves and put it in the bag and move it into the, the, the shipping department and put it together. This is a time for us to harvest the real life that we can have instead of us like you know, it, we got to build this thing. This is Mars and Saturn. It's going to take some time, but you watch. The stuff that's being created right now is so powerful, and the magic that's happening right now is so powerful. Just making sure that you appreciate the magic and realize that magic and potions and spells and amazing, you know, magic from the universe and the heavens, it doesn't have a microwave on it. <laughs> you can't just put this thing in for 45 seconds and it just spits out appreciate the moment in front of you. Appreciate the day to day right now and take each step one foot in front of the other and the adventure needs to be appreciated instead of expected. Hope to see you out at Hope in the Desert. I hope you're ready for this Mercury retrograde. This one might not it's a little crazy because it's a Mercury world sign. We are dealing with Neptune stuff. We are dealing with Chiron stuff. We are dealing with wounds. We are dealing with past cycles. We are dealing with insanity and insan insanity. You can stay sane if you stay in sane waters. But if you want to dip into those insane places, those things that don't make any logical sense and things that are just a little bit too far away in the universe, bro. Yeah, let's do it. I'd be cautious. You might just fall off a cliff. And if there was any card in the tarot that I would say, it would be the full card reverse that people could step into. You need to be very aware of where you're going right now and the journey will be fine. But you don't want that poor doggy falling off the cliff. Thanks so much for all your support. Make sure that you join me at leokingevents.com to get out to my awesome uh, live conference that's going to be out in the desert. Of course, Leo, the leokingapp.com to get me on my app every day. 
And thank you so much for all the support. Also, if you share this video, you have the opportunity to win a reading from me for free. Thanks so much for all your support. I truly appreciate it. And I thank you for subscribing on YouTube and watching The Uncut and sharing it to all your friends and family. And I will see you on the next Uncut for the Solar Eclipse. We're also doing a live spiritual dance music solar eclipse. It's going to be overwhelmingly awesome. You're not going to want to miss it. See you next week.